Um, okay, so it's 501, so I think that we can start. So if you're here and I see lots of, of happy names, um, welcome to um, the second um, webinar on mindfulness. And I'm going to let Alexa Ray talk to you about what's going to happen in this. But just a couple housekeeping notes. One is to keep yourself muted um, when you're not speaking, just because background noise can get in distracting and um, and you never know what your audio is picking up in the background at your, at your home. Um, you're welcome to use video or not, whatever you'd like, but there is going to be some um, interactive stuff that happens today. And so you can just mute or unmute yourself or jump in with your video or jump out, whatever feels comfortable to you. Um, this is being recorded just so that you know um, and will be shared through INA. Everybody, full disclosure, right? And, um, and we're going to end right on time. Um, Alexa Ray has asked that we hold uh, questions until the end, but if you have a question and you're worried you're going to forget or you have to hop off early, just put it in the chat and I'll make sure to ask it. Thanks so much and take it away. Awesome. Well, hello, hello everybody. For those that I can see, hi, Kristen, obviously, and Sue. And for those, if you don't want to share your faces, I totally understand. If you just want to hop in with your voice later to participate, so we're not the only three participating, that would be amazing. Um, but I think we're going to have a really good time for the next 60 minutes. I'm going to throw a lot of information at you in one sitting. Hi, Christine. So I just ask that, you know, be present, be mindfully listening the best you can. If you need to move your body, do so while you still mindfully listen, right? Connect with your breath. Um, and it often kind of resets our listening brain in a really effective way. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys. And let's see here, if this works, there we go, I'm still getting used to all this. Okay. One second here, sorry about that. And I guess um, also I wanted to say that um, if you can't hear me or you can't see me, just let me know by simply like waving your hand and then I'll know, okay, hey, I need to, you know, get going here. So I don't know what happened here. I'm not sure. I had this all set up, ready to go. And then I think I just closed out of it. So I apologize here. Okay. I'm going to bring this all the way back to the beginning. I apologize, guys. There we go. Awesome. I'm just going to share this screen with you, these slides here. And then can you guys all see that? Yeah. Okay, cool. And you guys see the big slide here. Um, you might see an arrow moving around. Do you see that, Sue? Awesome, wonderful, thank you so much. Well, I just wanted to say thank you, Sue, to you and the International Nanny Association for creating a series that supports nannies, especially during this unprecedented time in history. And a big thank you to everyone that is joining us today as a fellow nanny with over 20 years experience. There's nothing better than sharing space with others who get it. And I'm so happy to be here with each and every one of you today. So thank you. So a little bit about me, I'll kind of dive into just a bit about me. I've been caring for children for over 20 years. I also have practiced as a labor birth and postpartum doula. And I've worked with amazing unicorn families that have been wonderful and amazing and often been asked to come back, move or come back or move with them. And like any other good career nanny out there, I've worked with some not so great employers. So while I recognize my part in the partnership, a personal lack of boundaries, a lack of embodied self-care practice that really led to the infamous and what I call the nanny burnout. And I know we've all heard of this or we felt it at one time or another, um, but I sought after how I could change, how I could show up differently, recognizing that Growing in a career where we help others grow, we must also be embodying the inner personal growth as well. And I believe it's imperative that we also seek out the best science and community that supports the growth and the growing minds and the bodies of the children, no matter your ethnicity, your background, or your religious faith. So I've dedicated the last three years of studying, practicing, and choosing to stick with working with the most challenging nanny family yet that my career has faced, <laughs> while also immersing myself in an embodied practice of mindfulness. I'll constantly be a student and constantly be a beginner again as I continue to study and grow through my instructor and teacher roles. 
So now as I look back, I see my newfound boundaries, patience, time, grace, and embodied practice of physical exercise through yoga and mindfulness have literally changed not only my entire career, but also how I show up in the lives of the children and the families I care for. So during our last webinar, which was last Thursday, and you can find that on INA's website, um, we talked about what mindfulness is and what it's not. <clears throat> so we're just gonna go over that a little bit today um, and really kind of understanding how, let's see here. So last week we talked about, I'm sorry, my slides are jumping all over the place. So last week we talked about, and it, does this show, are you guys all seeing Sue the INA symbol right here? Awesome, perfect. So we talked about what it means to be a mindful nanny. And then today we're gonna to talk about how to embody the mindful nanny role. And then also next Thursday, we're gonna talk about how to bring mindfulness into the nanny's lives that we work for. Okay, so that kind of gives you a good little outline. So the, the flow of the presentation today is going to be, first we're gonna recap defining mindfulness, mindful moment and transition really defining that, looking at the key tools to embodying mindfulness looking at the ingredients of mindfulness, I'll explain this later, don't worry, and helpful resources outside of the webinar that we can reach and we can access. So I love this quote that I have on the screen here. It says, thank you so much for showing up for this webinar today with an eager heart to learn about reaching children through mindfulness. What we do matters and our jobs matter. I really liked this quote that I found through one of my most recent trainings that I'm doing on social and emotional for children. And, and it's from Natalie Goldberg. Whether we know, transmit the presence of everyone we have ever known, as though by le being in each other's presence. And then we go on carrying that other person in our body, not unlike the springtime when certain plants and fields we walk through and catch their seeds in the This is um, I just thought that was really beautiful. Feel free to take a screenshot of that with your phone, read it. And it's one of those quotes that you continually process through as you read it time and time again. And it kind of gives you a bigger understanding of what we're doing here. So in this webinar, we'll learn how to take the steps of embodying the mindful nanny role and understand how this will help us thrive in our careers. Embodying mindfulness is key to being a successful and mindful role model. So thank you for joining us today again as we discuss why our supporting roles as nannies matter and how mindfulness can be the segue into supporting children's social and emotional needs and modeling these behaviors to further connect all families as a whole, which I think we often see in our nanny careers. There's a separation. We do our job and the parents do their job. But what we want to do here is bond and integrate these processes into the whole family dynamic. And mindfulness is a really, really great segue in order to do that. So let's see here. What you're gonna wanna do today is if you don't already, have a pen and a paper of some kind that you can fit some general notes on. And then as well as there's a journal prompt towards the end and we'll get to that space and you'll be able to write a little bit. The whole point of embodying the nanny role is what I'm gonna bring you through in a sense today. We're gonna have an opportunity to practice this space. So let's see here. So our presentation layout looks like this. We'll cover the following and know that there's a lot of information, but we can answer the questions towards the end. There'll be some participants, um, there'll be some participation sprinkled throughout our time together. So be sure to stay tuned. Lessons like these require a sense of exploration in order to start really understanding the depth of this practice. So honestly, it was hard to fit everything into this presentation that I wanted to. I actually made six extra slides, but given our, our 60 minutes together, simply know that you can sign up for my newsletter, or look on my site, or follow me on Instagram. I'm fairly active on all my profiles, so you can always reach me there. Um, ask any additional questions you have, put them in the chat, Sue will be sure to ask them too, okay? That's awesome. Thank you so much, Sue, I super appreciate you. So we already looked at this quote, so I apologize. Then we're gonna look at mindfulness. So just as we did in our last webinar, let's take a mindful transition and a mindful moment before we begin. So I talked about this a little bit in our last webinar, but they're so important. So for those of you who are just now joining us today, we're here for, and you, were here, you weren't here for the last class, I wanna give you a quick explanation about mindful moments. 
Mindful moment is exactly what it sounds like. It's a moment we give ourselves that allows us to ground into ourselves, to disconnect from the thoughts and the stress and focus of our attention on something important. So before we dive in, I would acknowledge that we all came from a different place before we got on this call. Perhaps we came from another meeting or running errands or doing some other important task outside of this webinar. So I wanna take a mindful moment to recognize this. So I'm gonna invite us all into a mindful transition moment just like we would want to do for our kiddos. And we'll see and understand why this is. So let's take a moment to ground in. If you're sitting or you're standing, let's simply take a minute, 60 seconds to transition our focus and our attention into this new space of learning. So there are some basic ways we can greet transition to focus on something basic, like feeling the ground beneath our feet. And if it feels safe and comfortable, go ahead and rest your eyes for a moment. And then think to yourself, for three full breaths. I am breathing in and I am breathing out. I'm breathing in through my nose, expanding my belly, and I'm breathing out to allow the belly to settle back in towards the spine. And let's take just one more deep breath in and then exhale to let all the air out in our bodies. That's awesome. We just finished a mindful transition. It's as simple as that, 60 seconds, tuning in. So if we think about this for a moment, this is a really great tool between activities or tasks for the children we care for. Mindful transitions are what we talk about later as being one of the main ingredients in our efforts to carve out time in a child's life to explore the self. It's also very much gives back to us as caregivers of children when we ourselves take these mindful transitions. So thank you for embodying that with me just now. I know we can all agree as nannies, we wear many different hats and we go from one thing to the next, rushing into our next moments. And we also model this behavior to the ones we care for. So often, do we take just a few deep breaths before we transition? I didn't before I started mindfulness and I still to this day fall short of remembering. Um, and that's just humanity, that's just grace. So in fact, when, the la when was the last time you took 10 minutes to sit in silence? without your phone or without reaching for the next thing, we feel that we need to tend to. And as caregivers of children, we feel like we always want to tend to everything around us. So according to Harvard Medical Publishing reports, spending even 10 minutes of downtime to yourself in the quiet can help reduce stress, rebalance the mind, and then just restore energy. So I apologize, I skipped to this mindfulness slide fairly quickly. But I hope that you were able to tune into my words and active listening. So just a helpful reminder to do so because our human brains, I would too, just tend to tune out sometimes, right? So just check back in with your body, take a few deep breaths, and then we'll talk about what mindfulness is just real quick. In our last series together, we learned what mindfulness is and what it's not and how becoming a mindful nanny can help us thrive in our careers. So no worries if you missed this series, thanks to the I and Hey, as well as my website, you can go back and revisit the series as well as of the other resources I've mentioned anytime. So I'd like to be mindful of those who haven't yet seen the first series and give a quick loop in on what mindfulness is and where it came from. So as I said last week, if you Google what is mindfulness, you'll find thousands of personal definitions and quotes from some of the most respected leaders in neuroscience, behavioral health, and education of our time, such as John Kabat-Zinn, Dr. Dan Siegel, and Patricia Jennings. The biggest misconception of mindfulness is that while it looks and appears in the outside like meditation, the two are not the same. Meditation is often seen as a religious practice and while it originated in that form, it is applied in many secular forms today. So mindfulness simply pulls pieces from the meditative practice, including breath work and mental focus to support being intentional about your day-to-day -day moments. Just even thinking about that sentence brings me joy because <laughs> it feels so good. So when you focus your attention inward, you increase calmness, concentration, and emotional balance. So making that space, holding the space for yourself, your thoughts, your feelings, and the ways your body speak to you or making space for your worries somewhere else other than, I don't know about you, but for me, it's in my bed at night. That's when I worry, did I do my best as a nanny today? Um, as a partner in the community member, as a friend. So mindfulness is inclusive of all beings, no matter your background, ethnicity, or religious beliefs. And then in fact, science says that for people who are diagnosed with autism and ADHD after an eight week program, their work and school studies performance greatly increased. I encourage you to check out my first webinar series to dive in a little bit deeper into those numbers and science around mindfulness. It's pretty fascinating. 
I love this quote. This really, I don't, I get teary eyed when I read things like this from other students and it's from, and I, I encourage you to go check out mindfulschools.com, but it's from one of their documentaries. And one of the students stated, you go through the day without feeling what you feel. You get up, you do your morning routine, you go to school, you come back home and you don't stop. But with mindfulness, you do stop. I thought that was really powerful. When you look at it from a student's eyes, there's something about that that makes you realize and recognize how much this means to a student, even if they're younger than us and they themselves don't carry the embodiment of caring for someone else. But this mindfulness piece actually gives you the key ingredients to taking care of yourself. So when we take a key, when we take a peek at the key tools we need to implement in order to embody mindfulness, I simplified these into four basic components, integration, ingredients, embodiment, and community accountability. We can weave in these four tools into our daily practices on our own, and then sometime later, when you feel confident with the children you care for, you begin to implement them. So in the webinar, we'll break down these down together, and this is where, if you choose, you can participate in these exercises together. So introducing mindfulness to children and youth is a bit like introducing potty training. You wanna set yourself up for success and you certainly wanna stay consistent. You always want it to be fun and engaging and something that they feel the benefits from. We wouldn't want to sprinkle, sprinkle it in casually or certainly not use it as a punishment. We want to make a plan for ourselves first. Stick to that plan within ourselves for ourselves. Grow our community of accountability partners through the Mindful Nanny Collective, which is where I'm building a space within, you can find your own community to discuss your learnings and keep yourself on track. You also wanna be sure that only after you've embodied your own practice, when you see the benefits, this allows you to speak to them and teach them effectively when you discuss this with the parents. You always wanna make sure that this is okay to introduce with the children you care for, but first you have to be able to embody it to teach it, right? So next week I have my final webinar with INA on May 14th. We'll be discussing how to bring mindfulness into your nanny family's lives. So good associations and a sense of ease should always be the foundation of embodying and teaching mindfulness. Mindfulness is truly a continual practice. As a nanny who's been practicing this most of my life and only recently in the last three years began to dive in deeper into the knowledge and science, as well as the paired courses on the subject of mindfulness, I guarantee that you'll always be a constant student. So greeting life with a beginner's mind is one of the most amazing things that you can do. It has revolutionized the way that I show up as a nanny and it's just added value to my life. <clears throat> so I just wanna ask, I'm gonna unshare my screen. Can anyone tell me what they might believe the term the beginner's mind might mean? Yeah. I feel like it may be meaning, it may mean that, you know, you always have to go in, you don't know it all, you learn every day. So maybe, you know, you make a mistake, but it's fine, you learn from it. And, you know, that's the only thing I can kind of think of. Yeah. If your mom, you know, your mom boss corrects you, it's not a big deal. You know, uh -huh. Yes. Something. Yes. I love that. That was really insightful. Exactly. Anybody else? Thank you for sharing that. Okay, awesome. So for those who want to mute, you can, and then I'll pop up the screen again, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so essentially a big is shaking off those cobwebs, cobwebs of experience. We get caught in our own expertise. We bypass the new information. So we can really tune in and be there wholly for the children that we care for. So in my trainings, I'll spend some time exploring this concept in depth through practice. And we'll also have continual conversations together about how to cultivate a beginner's mind in order to thrive in our careers, meeting ourselves with fresh perspectives as we lean in and get to know the depth of who we are which is embodying this courageous passage within ourselves to get to know ourselves and understand our past legacies before us so that we can create a new legacy in our future. Only then will we truly embody the humanity within ourselves 
and then can see and meet the little humans we cohabitate with in a role that's meaningful. I'll also speak to the fact that this practice has dramatically changed how I interact with other adults, such as my partner, my friends, my family, and most certainly my employers. So let's look at integration. So just as we integrated our mindful transition together earlier in the beginning of this webinar, mindfulness can be integrated into our daily fabric before we even go to work. This can include taking yoga and mindfulness classes together, whether it's with me or your, our other fellow nannies virtually together or through some sort of app. There's a million mindfulness as well as your um, out there, right? You can also find a plethora of items on YouTube, but I think we can all agree that it's really nice when we have community to share it with. And I personally really enjoyed doing some workouts during the week virtually with others. It kept us accountable, certainly, and kept my self-care up to notch because I could go a little crazy during this time. So I also love the fact that I don't have to go to a gym. I can lead all of you through yoga and mindfulness with added tips and tricks to get your day off to a great start. So through my trainings, we weave in this physical and mental need to connect and you have the option to become a certified yoga teacher in the process as well as a certified mindfulness facilitator with my two partner companies. So <clears throat> I'd like to take a mindful moment and reflect on the fact that this is May and mental health is on the horizon this month, especially in times like these during a pandemic where we have never had to face in our lifetime before some of the obstacles that we're seeing. Like Kristen said, your hands are raw right now. You're working for two separate doctors. These are spaces that we have ordinarily been and found difficult, but now they're really accelerated and highlighted. So chances are that when you really, when you really think about the children that you care for, you have a strong wish to support this individual. What you hope for them is happiness, well-being, and to live with a sense of ease in the realistic worlds we live in. So to thrive in moments such as these, COVID-19, where we're faced to cohabitate closely with our family members, look deeply in our moments together as, fa as families, and then see how important all of our roles are as a community member and family member. I believe we're here today with International Nanny Association because we have a calling to care for children and youth. And I certainly know that I have a lifelong calling to support fellow nannies feel seen and connected in an industry that requires many hats calls for fast thinking, high demand, constant energy outputting, employers management, and some very real heartfelt pain, especially for those who have suddenly lost their jobs during this pandemic we're currently going through. So I've spent the last decade supporting families and nannies and coaching on next steps and how to really connect with their children. In the last three years, I've studied and practiced curated mindfulness techniques with children I teach and care for as a nanny and now as a registered children's and adult yoga and mindfulness instructor. I work at Nike as well as various preschools and private homes, and more recently navigating and applying the virtual teaching world, which by the way, Sue had some really awesome Zoom background ideas. Um, she did a lot of uh, Star Wars options, and then also I have some downloadable options if you want to, you can check out my Instagram. So now I've created the Mindful Care Collective and the Mindful Nanny Collective, venturing into the world of nanny meets entrepreneur, which is a kind of a wild ride. <laughs> so taking one step every day towards teaching caregivers and children how to connect and authentically model how to effectively increase calmness, concentration, and emotional balance. So that, with that being said, let's move into the participation portion of the webinar today. So we, again, if you don't have your camera on and you'd like to participate, please feel free to turn your computer on. And Sue, also, I hope you can join us too. So let's look at what I call the ingredients components, and that makes up integration and embodiment. So when we look at here, we've got the key ingredients. Earlier, we talked about embodiment, and we, or we talked about integration and also embodiment, but we have these integrate ingredients in the in-between. So we've got mindful transitions, mindful routines. Oops, I'm so sorry, jumping back. Mindful communication and mindful awareness. So when we think about the three of these, really just in your mind's eye, picture what these are to you. So when we look at mindful transitions, let's break these apart a little bit. And I apologize, your beautiful faces are on the screen, so I can't read my screen. <laughs> so when we're breaking these down here a little bit, we're looking at mindful transitions. So being with the ordinary in between moments with children and creating a space of observation and reflection. 
So can anyone name times that would, we could implement mindful transitions and what that might look like, similar to what we practice today? Well, one I know for me is always that time when kids are coming from school or classes to being in the home environment, just, um, you know, finding a routine, well, a routine or something that helps that transition, because sometimes that can be, like, very difficult. Yes, yes, exactly. Anyone else? I think after meal times is an organic time to incorporate this because you're you're going through a transition anyway. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And yes, Kristen, I saw you raise your hand. Um, I feel like um, whenever you transition to a different activity or a different thing, especially now that we're all home with the kid, like people that are working, our home um, with me, we are on a strict schedule. We have gym. We have lesson planning. We have you know um, lunch. We have free choice. We have quiet hour. So in between things, maybe we can take a moment to think about how we're going to um, jumpstart the next activity or. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much for sharing that. All amazing options that we can integrate into our days. So when we pick up our children in the car, we want to say, for example, hello, Johnny, so nice to see you. Greeting, greeting the children we care for. So really looking at them in the eyes, making a connection helping them feel seen and focused on, and also teaching and modeling that behavior. So the idea is, right, instead of just walking into the home, you're not just like getting to work and everyone just kind of ignores you, which typically happens, but we all yearn to feel seen, right? And that can really set the motion of any kind of transition, especially if you're coming from a really difficult or challenging part. So asking also, what was the best part of your day? What was the most challenging part of your day? And for little ones, three and up, you can start introducing after preschool pickups, what were the warm fuzzies of your day? Or what were the cool pricklies of your day? These sweet little moments. And you can do that before and after a nap, even when they're younger than that. Really just talking to them, even as infants. Good morning. Hello, how are you? How does your body feel right now? It's so nice to see you. And really looking at that connection in the eyes. So then we look at mindful routines. So creating habits for the body to recognize later in life stimulating a sense of consistency and structure into the fabric of the day, taking the time we are gifted with the children we work for and dripping in moments of mindfulness. So equipping children with the tools needed to face new unfamiliar, what I call stimulus, circumstances, influences, or experiences. So can anyone name times that we would implement mindful routines? And we kind of talked about that a little bit. So we talked about transition, but then there's also routine. So keeping these three or four components sprinkled throughout. Yeah. Um, homework has become a routine and homeschool has become a routine and it's really tough for the kids because they're not used to, you know, doing Zoom meetings with their friends and their teachers and doing all this, these worksheets. So um, I guess during those times when the kids maybe are about to lose it, we can kind of incorporate, you know, uh, moments of mindfulness. Yes, I love that so much. Thank you. So yeah, we can also, like Lisa said, we can use this in between meals or when we take we wake them up in the morning or use it be before homework, like Kristen said, or in, in before their naps or after the naps. So I have some really fun tools and examples with printables that I'm coming up with for you to utilize if you choose to take that mindful nanny training. Also, you get like little printouts that help the parents encourage them to do something over the weekend. So again, you're just sprinkling in these little systems and these moments, and you can also create that yourself, these little notes. Hey, this week we're working on mindful breath. Maybe this weekend you guys could pick a flower. We've been talking about that. That's really special to you, and you guys can each pick one out. You take a deep breath in, smell the flower, and then a deep breath out. You know, and they're showing, and there's so many different spaces you can do. Can we focus on, and we'll get to that actually. I mean, I, I get too excited about this. I'll skip forward. <laughs> okay. So then we're gonna look at mindful communication, the other two ingredients. So can anyone give me examples of what mindful communication might involve or look like? Yes, awesome. I would definitely say to think before we speak, especially to our employers or in our children, um, I would also say to maybe take a few deep breaths before you get aggravated and react to a 
child throwing all their food on the floor or throwing <laughs> across the room because they don't want to do their homework. Yeah. <laughs> moment. Yes, I love that. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Lisa. Hi. I, I think also uh, being still in listening and taking in information before you react to it. Yes, exactly. That mindful listening piece, tuning in. Where are they at right now? How must they be feeling? We, we recapped our day earlier today and maybe that foundation is still lingering and that lens of that, the bad and that felt heavy to them during their work day or their school, you know, it's work to them. Their school day is rolling into this moment. So maybe it, because we have an opportunity to check in again mindfully and really listen and tune in with the wisdom that we carry as adults and also caregivers. And what about you, Christine? Oh, you're muted. I know I do it all the time. <laughs> Sorry. Um, very similar to what I think Lisa just said, um, like making sure that children are know that they're being heard. Um, yeah. That applies to bosses too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> awesome. So that's yeah, learning the impact of communication, being with ourselves helps us achieve a greater sense of calm, and clarity and awareness of life and sets the stage for mindful communication with others. You guys nailed it. Better relate to others and understand the wisdom of taking a few deep breaths before feeling that you can respond. It just needs to be held space for them. So becoming mindful, not mindless, which is super key in our listening and our speaking skills. So Circling back to the concept that we must embody our own practice, let's read my description of mindful communication, which we just read. I skip ahead all the time. So if you have questions about this, it's perfectly normal. And I love that you're approaching this with a beginner's mindset. Does anybody have any questions about this? What I mean? It seems like we're all on the same page. Okay, so let's look at mindful awareness, harnessing the ability to be present moment by moment, becoming well-informed due to heightened interest in a singular situation or development. So can someone give me some examples of what mindful awareness might feel or look like? And they're different. So that's awesome because I'm gonna walk you through an example of it, but embodying awareness looks like taking a walk outside and choosing to focus on one particular thing, such as the blades of grass, or like I gave the example on the last week's training, simply taking my time to drink my water, sipping it, tasting what ordinarily would be something I just swallow quickly and I don't think about the taste, if any, where the water came from or how it got there. So I'm gonna guide us through an exercise. It'll take maybe three minutes. <clears throat> but let's take an awareness exercise given, um, given that it's two o'clock in the afternoon my time and around dinner, dinner time for others. So, in this mindful moment, let's think about the food we consume today. So perhaps your last meal and specifically one item of something you've consumed. So in, so go ahead and find your seat and let's do that the best way we can to find a comfortable, comfortable position in your seat. So perhaps even rest the eyes if you haven't done yet. So just kind of feel your left sit bone and your right sit bone. Allow your shoulders to stack over your hips. Just allow a gentle ease, maybe even draw the chin down towards uh, the collarbone and just sense in where you're at in this moment and time and space. So if you haven't rested your eyes yet and you haven't done so today, I don't know about you, I haven't been able to rest my eyes yet and it feels safe for you, go ahead and do that. And then just begin to connect with your breath. In through your nose and out through your nose. And then feel a sense of your breath coming in past your upper lip and down into your belly. And then I invite you to take another breath in through the nose and then place a gentle hand on your low belly. And as you inhale, feel your belly expand. And as you exhale, feel the belly drop back towards the spine. Let's do that one more time. Deepest breath yet in through the nose and then deepest breath back out through the nose. And can you just simply observe this item? So picturing simple observing. So accounting for everything that this, when you look at your mind's eye, picture that food and then picture the shape, 
the size, the color, how it sat on your plate or in your bowl. And then can you take a deep breath in through your nose and then back out through your nose? Just simply observing this item. Accounting for everything that this item shows us visually, the shape, the size, the color. And then now imagine where it came from. All the back, all the way back to where it first originated. Was it grown in a field or was it created in a factory? Who might have picked it or packaged it? Was it sent here on a truck or via plane? Where did you then find it? Was it at your local grocery store or a local market? Did you or someone you love prepare it for you? What did you have to do before you had it in front of you? Then in your mind's eye, the best you can, picture picking it up, whether that's with a fork or your own hand. If you want to dive in deeper, take the utensil out of the picture and picture holding it in your hands. What does it feel like in your hand, between your fingers? What is the texture? Is it soft or mushy or hard? And what shape is it? Gently, the best you can, observe this from, for one or two breaths. Just maintaining a sense of focus on the object. And when and if you become sidetracked and your mind and thoughts begin to come in that distract you from observing the object, you can simply and gently escort yourself back to the practice of simply observing the item. Now smell the object if you can. Does it smell sweet or salty? Does it even have a smell? Does it smell hot or cold? And now observe this for one or two more breaths. Now take that object and just gently bring it towards the mouth, but don't quite in your mind's eye take a bite yet. Use your imagination here as if you've paused in time. What shows up for you in this space? How eager are you to do what you naturally do? And now gently and slowly take that bite. What is the temperature? the consistency, relish in this moment. It took time to get here. Enjoy the food with ease and joy. Bring a sense of gratitude to your experience. What emotions or feelings or thoughts come up? And just take two solid deep breaths in through the nose and deep breaths back out. And then begin to wiggle your toes and your fingertips. And then gently open your eyes. And when you do, bring a sense of awareness to the room. Pick something around you that brings you joy or ease when you look at it. Is it the color of it? Is it the feel? So let's take a moment after that mindful awareness exercise to reflect. So if you want to share your reflections, you can. <laughs> I love that. It makes me eager to have a drink. I know that when I hold something very close to my mouth, what comes up for me is anticipation. I can taste the lemon in my lemonade. I can taste it without even making the connection with it yet. And what I notice is that I'm craving something like that. And then the back of my mouth starts like, you know, the little <laughs> that feeling. And so it's just little things like this. So does anybody want to reflect with us on what you experienced in that space? Mm -hmm. 
I love it. <laughs> I was super anxious. I felt super anxious. Like, I'm like, okay, I want to take a bite already. I was actually salivating like a dog. I was like, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> out of me. Yes. <laughs> it's amazing what the mind can do, right? Mm-hmm. Anybody else? Awesome. I love this quote that you guys can see on the screen. So where you are now is the result of your previous overriding thoughts and actions. So tomorrow is still in the making. So plant good seeds. I found this and I love this. This is a woman who um, has written several books actually that I've never heard of before. And I really love this quote. I continue to use it and I continue to go back to it. So when we think about embodying the mindful nanny role, we think about a lot of pretty important concepts that we have to face on a day-to-day basis. So we look at supporting the families we work with as a whole, setting the tone in the household, supporting the social and emotional needs of children, setting foundational communication structures, teaching critical life skills, teaching mindful routines to support self-management, goal setting and healthy decision-making skills, teaching and supporting healthy regulated emotions and communication, creating a home that supports a positive climate and community among siblings, parents, and self. It's a lot. And when we take these ordinary moments and we make them more mindful by integrating ourselves and embodying these seemingly silly moments, even just taking five minutes to look at your hand, breathing in, on the thumb, breathing out on the exhalation, in, breathing in the forefinger, all these are tools that you can guide a child through. You can use a simple hand to do that, or a flower, petals, even a piece of clover, right? There's tools that are all around us that we can use. So, Mindfulness and yoga are growing in popularity for really good reasons. And in my first webinar series, we really talk about the science that Harvard is finding, as well as UMass, UC Berkeley, and so forth. But I'll kind of sum it up really quickly. After an eight-week mindfulness study at Marina Middle School in San Francisco, the results were certainly noticed. After the course, 80% of the seventh graders calmed down more easily when upset, 58% focused better in class, 40% used it to avoid arguments or fights, 34% said it raised their grades. And I love this one. This is my faves. 86% said more kids should learn mindfulness. And I love that when our kids speak to us and tell us what they need, it's really our responsibility to tune in and listen and meet that need. And more and more school systems. So now it says similar results were found in survey of nearly a thousand students who learn mindfulness at eight other schools. With this becoming the norm, we want to set our children up that we're we're taking care of for success. So embodying this mindful nanny role and then modeling that mindful nanny role is gonna set them up for success when they go to school and help with things like focus, communication, integrating conflict, understanding how to show up. So I think we can all agree that meets some of our goals for the kids that we care about and we think about how we wanna set them up for success. I also love this quote. So when I think about um, embodying and modeling behavior, children learn more from what you are than what you teach. I love that so much. Isn't that the truth? It's so the truth. So just to sum that up again, I know that was a lot of information recap. So we've got integration, ingredients, and embodiment. So right now, take a moment. I mentioned before, if you had a pen or a piece of paper, you can write down the questions or take a screenshot of this slide if you want to just so that we can stay on track and we have time for questions. Let's go ahead and do that. And then take five minutes after this presentation to just ponder these questions. And then for now, we'll move on to the next slide. I'll give us two more breaths on that if you wanna either take a screenshot. And also, I can mail this to you too as well. Okay. So the other component when we talked about all of our ingredients, the final one was creating community accountability. So 65%, science says that 65% of us will have a greater chance of sticking with our goals when you have community support. So find your tribe, right? 
We all are amazing nannies. INA provides us a wonderful opportunity for us to connect and further our education. Now the community part and the accountability are super important. So recently I've been doing a lot of virtual meetups and I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, there's, I've got some mindful nanny responses from our last few that we've done together and it was just, it was pretty powerful actually. And we were only supposed to be talking for, and the invitation was you didn't have to stay the whole time. We we're only supposed to talk for an hour. We ended up talking for an hour and a half, two hours and almost every single person stayed. It was super fun. So these are the most recent responses from um, the, that new virtual meetup. You can read the descriptions. And of course, these aren't real pictures of the caregivers. I created this website and didn't, or not website, but this slide and didn't have enough time to ask each person for their consent on posting their pictures. Consent's a really big thing for me. Um, just mindfully being respectful, right? So in our Mindful Nanny Collective, uh, if you will, we'll discuss our careers as nannies and support one another in hearing and seeing each other's stories. Um, and this is definitely, I wanna say that this is a confidential space and respectful group that has, is inclusive of all folks. And we have a little digital well-being um, kind of exercise that we go through and we go through the main rules to keep everybody on track. It's really fun. So for now, um, we meet every other Sunday and I hope to grow this so that we can meet more regularly. And for those who'd like to sign up for weekly virtual yoga or mindfulness classes, ju classes just message me. Um, and I know me, I could certainly use more accountability myself to maintain my own self-care practices. So you can follow me on Instagram and all that jazz. So also launching my Mindful Nanny and Babysitter and Live in Au Pair trainings coming in August. So I'm very excited about that. Stay tuned, follow me on social media or the newsletter and you can go that route. And because each of you actually lasted this entire webinar, which I'm so proud of you for doing, um, we're gonna, whoops, we're gonna go back here. Um, I'm gonna put a quote in the chat at the very end or not a quote, a coupon code. It's gonna be mindful um, and then I'll finish what the rest of that quote is actually. So it's not all over on Instagram or, uh, YouTube, but I'll put that in the chat and you guys will get 50% off of your own services and packages and whatever you, you might need for your own self care needs. Um, and then let's see here. Yeah, I think. Oh, then also, if you want to sign up for my newsletter, I have a million free resources for nannies and families, especially during this time. So that is that. Um, you're welcome to register, visit the mindfulcarecollective.com, subscribe to the newsletters, stay up to date on monthly offerings for nannies. You can even book your own self-care session with that 50% off coupon. It's good for the next three months. Um, and then just continue to practice your own mindfulness practice um, this week and start your own and start to see your own results in that space. And then that's about it. So does anybody have any questions with the last 10 minutes we have? Again, thank you so much, each and every one of you for just spending the time to do your own you know, self-care by really checking in in your career and where you're at and then listening to me. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Alexa Ray. That was amazing. And I feel very calm now. Uh, <laughs> right on. <laughs> yes. oh, um, nobody put anything in the chat that I see, but if you have okay. any questions, you can unmute yourself and ask or raise your hand or jump on the video, whatever. Or if you don't want to talk, you can type them in the chat and I will ask them for you. I love that. And I just put the coupon code in our chat for you guys so you guys can get, if you guys want 50% off and you have three months to use that. So no stress. Yes. What are, what are some ways that you could introduce this to a family who maybe hasn't already thought about bringing mindfulness into their home? That's a really good question. We're going to cover that next week in our last webinar, how to really integrate that space and how to have those conversations. Um, and again, like I said, I really think it's important that you first embody that practice before you speak to it, because then you can really understand what it means to really listen to a child or to listen to an employer. So that way, if you do receive some feedback of questions, you can actually answer them and not be like, well, you can research it. You know what I mean? And just come from a, a, a more informed place, which will come from and be received as a more confident place in that space. That's a great question. Thank you so much for asking that. Anybody Thank else? <laughs> It's such a calm group. We're all just. I love, that. <laughs> I love that. Well, I would say, you know, Lisa, to also your question, this week, spend, pick two or three things. And I put it in my last webinar. I put a whole list of items that you could do. So mindful walking, mindful eating, 
mindful, you know, playing. There's so many different things you can do. Pick one that really was going to work with you in your daily schedule, embody that, and then begin to start thinking how you could explain that concept to somebody else and maybe get somebody in your own household to get curious with you and they pick something else. And then the two of you can kind of discuss those results and it brings up so much thought. It's so different for every single person. It's really a unique, you become your own best teacher in a sense. And so it's fun to, to have that space with other people. Well, I just want to say thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. I really appreciate you. This is only my second presentation ever. And so I very much appreciate you mindfully listening and tuning in and then sitting with my own um, excitement slash nervousness slash all the other emotions that come with doing all these types of things. So thank you. Well, thank you very much. And thanks for everybody for giving your time. Make sure that you um, stay connected with the INA and register for the next one, which is next week. On yes, next Thursday, May 17th, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, two o'clock sure. Pacific time. So make sure you register and you can find that information on the INA Facebook page or the INA member group as well, or give them an email and they'll send you the information. Lovely. Everyone, awesome. Thanks very thank much. You. Oh, thank Literally, you, Pauline. Thanks for doing thank this. You. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you it's so really much. Great. for me. Wonderful. So thank you. Oh, wonderful. Good job for joining after a long day. So way to go. You're an awesome <laughs> nanny. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Lisa. Bye. Thank you, Sue. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Bye. -bye. Bye.